Faber-Castell Polychromos or Prismacolor Premier. These are probably two of the most popular pencils amongst colored pencil artists, but which one is actually the best? So today I'm going to be putting them head to head in a brutal contest to work out just that. So let's dive straight into it. So I want to start things off super simple by talking about the price. Now the 36 pack of Polychromos that I'm using today cost me 55 pounds. And the 36 pack of Prismacolors that I'm using today cost me 54 pounds, so literally the exact same, about one pound 50 per pencil. And this price can depend, very dependent on where you are in the world and what website you get them from. But yeah, this is just the sets that I've got and the prices that I paid for them. So just before we get on to actually testing these pencils, I just wanna look at the build quality. And honestly, I've never actually used Prismacolor before. So before recording this video, I did some research and there has been some absolute nightmare horror stories when it comes to the quality of Prismacolor pencils. And just before recording this very footage, I looked through the pencils that I have and honestly I think the stories are absolutely true so if I just open this set up um, yeah immediately with this white pencil I noticed that you have a massive crack in the paint and I'm not quite sure if this is a crack just in the paint itself or if it's in the wood that goes all the way down to the, um, the lead and if I come over here to the violet blue and I turn it up here you can see here that the lead there isn't even in the center of the pencil and what this means is that when I sharpen it one side will have wood and then the other side will have um, pigments now I can get around it but it's kind of annoying and also on the black here you can see that there's just the printing on them just isn't very good at all it's like all flaky and weird so yeah the build quality of these Prismacolors is a bit rubbish there's no really way of sugar coating it they feel like the kind of things that you used to use when you were like five uh, so yeah, it'll be interesting to see how these perform a bit later. So shifting over to the other side of the table, we have the Faber-Castell Polychromos. And if I open up this nice synthetic leather case with magnets there and just pull out this orange pencil and compare it to the orange pencil from the Prismacolor set, you can see here that the Polychromo is actually a lot thicker. And if we just come to the bottom here, the Polychromo has got paint on the bottom to protect the lead, whereas the Prismacolor does not. It also feels a lot heavier. And if I just bring this closer to the camera, you can see here that the printing is actually where it's supposed to be and isn't missing in places. And honestly, overall, it just feels a lot more professional and like you paid a lot of money for it, which we did. So in order to compare these pencils, I'm gonna be drawing a butterfly and splitting it directly in the middle. And we're gonna start on the left-hand side here with the Faber-Castell Polychromos. Now in this video, Video, I have actually slated the Prismacolors quite a bit. So I actually want to start by kicking some dirt onto Polychromos. Now that's actually kind of difficult because in my opinion, they are a very, very good pencil, but there are two things that really kind of bug me when using them. And it's the fact that the white pencil isn't actually very opaque. In fact, it's more like translucent. So let's say you want to go and add some like highlights and details and stuff on top of some pigment that you've already got down. You can't really do that because it just doesn't really make a mark at all. So you can see here, that's kind of what's happening. It is kind of easy to get around. So let's say you do want to leave an area quite light and have some speckles in it. I would just recommend just outlining them with your pencils and just not putting any pigment in that area. And this will help to keep them nice and bright. Or if you do accidentally go over these areas, I would recommend just going in with a white paint pen just to add in those really, really bright highlights to help increase that contrast to make your drawings pop. Now, another downside to these polychromos is the fact that the LEDs, they're obviously oil-based, which means they're actually quite hard. So it does take quite a bit of time to really build up the saturation on the page and get like a really solid finish that you're going to be after. This drawing in total, just this side of the butterfly, actually took me around five hours in total to complete, which I mean, it's not too bad, but it's still quite a considerable amount of time. Now, onto some good stuff now, is the fact that the hardness of the lead is actually like a double-edged sword. Because the lead is so hard, it maintains a point for a really long time. And what this means is that you're able to go into those more detailed areas and really pick up on more details without having to sharpen your pencil every like three pencil strokes like you would with like wax-based pencils like the Prismacolors. And another good thing about these pencils is the fact that they have really good light fastness. Now you're probably thinking, what the heck is light fastness? Now this is actually the pencil's ability to maintain its like saturation of color over like a period of time. So let's say you do a drawing back in like 2020. If you used a pencil with good light fastness, it will still look exactly the same in like 2024. However, a pencil that does not have good light fastness, if I did it back in 2020, by 2024, it will look really dull and washed out. So kind of like how sunlight has really like destroyed the pigment. And so yeah, Polychromos are probably one of the best light fastnesses out of any other pencil brand, apart from like Caran d'Ache Luminance but I think they're like £4.50 per pencil. So, you know, they can do what they want. And yeah, just some other great things about these pencils is the fact they blend together really well. You have a really nice selection of colors. And on the blending topic, basically I've been able to create really cool drawings with only 12 polychromos. And this is because they blend together so well to create loads of different colors. 
And yeah, you can layer them and layer them without them coming blotchy. But something I do want to mention as well is because they are oil-based, you don't get something called wax bloom. Now, wax bloom isn't actually something that I've experienced myself, but doing research and stuff for like this video and other stuff as well, I've heard that when using wax pencils over time, like the wax and the pigment can like somewhat separate and you're left with like this waxy film on top of your drawing. But luckily these polychromos do not do that. So now you're probably thinking, well, that's a lot of good stuff about the polychromos and they sound pretty epic and like awesome. And yeah, they pretty much are. And I'm not quite sure how the Prismacolors are actually gonna like face up against them, but it'll be interesting. So let's move on to that right now. But just before we actually get on to testing the Prismacolors, if you'd like to learn how to draw like me, I now have a completely free in-depth drawing course that covers everything you need to create realistic drawings of cars, people, animals, really anything you'd like. And it's completely for free and that'll be linked down below. So with that said, let's get on to testing the Prismacolors. So based on the build quality of these pencils, I didn't necessarily have the highest hopes for the Prismacolors. However, I actually started using them and it was like, you know what? These aren't actually all that bad. You see, because they are a wax-based pencil, they have quite a soft lead. Now this does come with its upsides and its downsides, but the good thing about this is that you're able to get pigment down onto the page really, really quickly. I mean, the entire process of this side actually took me an hour less than the polychromo side, and I think the results are actually really quite similar, if not identical. Now, there is a downside to having a really soft lead, and this is the fact that you have to constantly sharpen it. And one thing that I want to note with these pencils that's really important that you understand is they absolutely suck at being sharpened. I mean, I was sharpening them, the lead would snap. I would sharpen them, the lead would snap, and I just gave up at some point. I don't think at any stage during this entire drawing process, I worked with a sharp pencil because they were just so bad at being sharpened. So yeah, that's not ideal because you do want a sharp pencil to pick up on details, but you can kind of make do with it. And again, having a pencil that's not able to be sharp makes these really bad at doing like animal drawings with like fur and things. And another downside to the leads being so soft is that the page becomes oversaturated very quickly. Quickly. And this kind of sucks because with my drawing method, I use lots and lots of layers. However, with this, in about two layers, you can't really put any more pigment down without it just sliding over everywhere and becoming really blotchy. So yeah, not ideal, but I mean, you can work around this by picking up on more details per layer. Now I have slated the Prismacolors a lot in this video, but one thing I do want to say that's really good about them is how vibrant the colors are. I think they're more vibrant than the Polychromos, but there is also a downside to this too. And it's the fact that the Prismacolors actually have really bad light fastness. So again, that's the ability for them to maintain that saturation over a period of time and yeah you'll probably find that after like one two or three years the colors of this um, right hand side of the drawing will look really dull in comparison to the left hand side as the natural light starts to like dull the pigment and again because these are wax based pencils you do also run the risk of having that wax bloom that we talked about when I was going through the polychromos so now for the moment of truth, which one should you pick? Faber-Castell Polychromos or Prismacolor Premier? Now, as you can see here, they both give pretty much the same results. However, in terms of the experience of using them and the professional quality build of them, I would always go for the Faber-Castell Polychromos because for £1.50 per pencil, you expect a professional material and these, they're just not it. So yeah, if you've enjoyed this video, I shall see you over in the next one. We should appear on screen around about now.